Hello and welcome to Cinemastrophe. I'm Don Perignon, saving you from getting ripped off. And welcome back to Superhero Month! I was going to review a different movie, but this being the final installment of Superhero Month, I had to end it with a porno. Spider-Man XXX, a porn parody, is brought to us by Vivid and written and directed by the self-proclaimed king of porn parodies, Axel Braun himself. Now, I haven't watched any of Braun's recent works. Don't worry, I will. But as we all know, there was a period not too long ago when Braun stopped caring, started throwing anything together, and slapped the surname Poor Parody on it. Fortunately, this was made before that period, so we get to see something with actual effort put into it. Oh, bet! Oh, oh! Oh, bet! Oh, bet! Oh, what the fuck did you think? What the hell I was going to do? Every time I stand in front of you, so you don't have to see. So the movie starts out with Maxwell Dillon working on the telephone pole when it's hit by lightning. Shocking, isn't it? You're damn right it is. Someone actually got Electro's origin right for a change. Following the title credits, we see that Dillon has not only survived, but has powers. And he decides to start living a life of crime. I don't know why, he can actually make twice as much suing his company for making him work on the power lines in the rain. Cut to the Daily Bugle. In the future! Or would it be the present and that was the past? Craven the Hunter was anyway, we see Jane Jonah Jameson ranting about Craven the Hunter being arrested for murder. Captain Stacy told me there's plenty of evidence. Ah, bullshit, Robbie! Craven tried to rid this city of a pest and Spider Man set him up! Holy shit! No Spidey origin? There is a guy. And he's tired of seeing that shit too! Who asked you anyway, Parker? What good are you? This morning, Spider-Man and that juggernaut knocked down a building? Where were you? Where are my pictures? I pay you to be everywhere. You know what, Parker? You're fired. Fired. F-I-R-E-D. Fired. That's an okay Jameson, but I wonder what J.J. Simmons would say about it. Serious? You're fired. Well, he's uh certainly mellowed out in his old age. Well, Peter, that doesn't mean anything. Peter Parker, did you get fired again? Once again, Sarah Siobhan, not hired for her acting skills. Peter takes the firing lightly as usual and heads to the funeral of one Norman Osborne. Your friends with the sign. I guess pictures would be declasse. You're lucky you have a great ass. It really makes you wonder how bad the other takes were that they settled on that one. After Peter leaves, Robbie decides that he needs Betty to take some dictation from him. I would say ew, but seeing how Betty is technically a pedophile, one time dating a 15-year-old Peter Parker at age 26, seeing her with a man her age is a step up. Cut to the funeral, where we see one angry Harry Osborn being a dick to everyone. Harry, if you need anything, we're here for you. I need a glass of whiskey and a fucking shotgun. Come on, man, you don't need to resort to that. I know you, you're better than that. You know me? You don't know me? You're supposed to be my best friend, you don't know a damn thing about me. You're just like my father. No, your father is dead. Making him nothing like your father. After the funeral, assuming leaving Harry to drown at his own shit party, Aunt May introduces Peter to Mary Jane. 
If this movie was made today, Aunt May would be young and hot, and introducing Peter to Mary Jane would have a completely different meaning. Hey, it's legal now. Let's face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot. Elsewhere at Bronze Motel? Honestly, I got nothing. That just really confused the shit out of me. Why? Sparks are flying between Electro and a hooker, which ends in an electrifying climax. That's right, the electric jizz I always bring up. All that one time. But it was a good one time I brought it up. Well, Enter the kingpin, who offers Electro a job. Not that kind of job. Elsewhere, Peter and MJ are leaving a Dazzler concert, and she's about to show her appreciation when his spider sense goes off. Bet you didn't know they could be triggered by STDs, did you? So he just leaves her alone in an alley. Who left you out in the cold for us to play with, huh? Good job. Don't fucking move. We get a little Spidey action, which looks pretty good for a porno. And then we get some Spidey action. Come on, don't act like you didn't think about it the first time you saw this scene in the theater. It's like the first time you saw Superman fly, you thought, the sex must be amazing. The new Cinemashby t-shirt is here. That's right, you can be the envy of your friends while styling and profiling in your brand new Cinemashby t-shirt. But wait, fashion trend setting is the only thing it's good for. It can be used to wash the dishes, scrub the floors, wash yourself, wipe your ass, Warning, do not flush dirt down toilet. Shit, shit, shit! Discipline your pet. Be a superhero. Rock the sun. Blow your nose. Wrap your hair. Hide from your enemies. Well, maybe not. Nurse a black eye. And much, much more. Don't delay to order your new Cinemaster t shirt. Click on the link in the description. Operators are standing by. Electro is called into a meeting with the Kingpin. Mr. Dillon, I'm curious. Have you ever thought of grounding yourself? What? You know, wrap a wire around your ankle to drain the power out so you don't leave a trail of dead hookers in your wake. How do the cops think about these crimes? I mean, his jizz is electric, so there's no DNA. He must think these hookers are being killed by electric ghost Pokemon. There, I joined the Pokemon Go Mention Club. Oh, Pikachu! No, not the polka stop! Is there a point to this meeting? Because my patience is becoming finite. Um, sorry. That word's too big for Electro. Kingpin tells Electro that the job he has for him is to steal something for him. Seriously? You're surprised? You're bad guys. It's what we do. Peter shows back up at the Daily Bugle. I'm not really sure why. He doesn't have any pictures to sell. I'm like the spring. I always come back. Yeah, so does herpes. Okay, he beat me by literally two seconds. Since he's there, JJ sends him to track down Electro and snap some pictures. Because nothing screams front page news as photographer killed trying to take a picture of a supervillain. Electro? How do you know that? Police found another dead hooker with Electro's MO. Cock therapy. Language, Miss Brandt. <sighs> it's a good thing you take it up the ass. That didn't even make sense! That night, Peter and MJ are on a double date with Flash and Gwen. You know, if I was Peter Parker and I was dating Mary Jane and I knew she sucked Spider-Man's dick, I don't know if I'd be comfortable still dating her. I know we're not in a relationship or anything, but if she can suck his dick at the drop of a hat, who else's dick is she sucking all willy-nilly? I mean, I know it was my dick that she sucked, but she didn't know that. Then I'd have to pretend that I didn't know that she sucked Spider-Man's dick, even though I did know, because she didn't know that I was Spider-Man. So she sucked Spider-Man's dick, thinking it was Spider-Man's, not knowing it was my dick. Now I have to pretend that I don't... When the lights in the city go out and they see a huge spark of electricity in the distance, Peter uses Aunt May as an excuse to leave, and as soon as he's gone, Gwen, Flash, and MJ have a threesome. Well, there goes the answer to my earlier question. I would absolutely continue dating her. My friendship with Flash would have to end, though.
We cut to a lecture at the warehouse with two goons pulling off the job they were hired to do. Hurry up, you idiots, or every fucking case in this town will be on our heads. So basically, you're just worried about Thor and Vision then? You know, if you wouldn't have knocked out the whole city, it probably wouldn't be so obvious what's building you, you're ingenious. There is logic in what he says. Spider-Man, I was hoping you'd show. We've got a score to settle. You were doing so well up until that one line. One line! The two fight, with Electro managing to get a clean shot on Spidey, stunning him long enough for Electro to grab hold of him. But of course, he wouldn't be a supervillain if he didn't take the time to gloat, giving Spidey a chance to recover, webbing Electro's hands and feet together, closing the circuit, causing a feedback effect. Spider-Man goes after the two goons when he runs into Black Widow. She tells him the crate the two goons took belonged to S.H.I.E.L.D. and asks him to help get it back, but won't tell him what's in it. You know what? I... I'm gonna get back to you on this one. What can I do to convince you? Good thing she wasn't named Praying Mantis, otherwise Spidey's head would be missing afterwards. <laughs> I'll let you ponder which one. The movie ends revealing it was Captain America's shield that was stolen. Why would he even want that? And with Otto Octavius renting out Aunt May's spare room. Room for rent? Nice to meet you. You're very kind, my dear. The name's Octavius. Dr. Otto Octavius. This movie was not too shabby. No, seriously. With a few tweaks, a bigger budget, and better acting, this could be a feature-length film. What little story that there is, is captivating. It contains action, romance, and a little bit of mystery. It would've worked way better as the basic plot to Amazing Spider-Man 2 than whatever it was that they gave us in that thing. I'm still not sure what the basic plot to that movie was. Killing Gwen Stacy or something? Of course, this story would have to be updated to represent this era. It has a late 60s, early 70s Spider-Man vibe to it, which I kinda dug for the porn, but would definitely flop as a mainstream film. It's pretty clear that this is one of Braun's quality works, with great sets, authentic looking costumes, decent story, and attention to detail related to the source material. It's the kind of work that you used to expect from him before he started doing things like, well, this. God, this is beyond lazy. So if you're looking to get your superhero fetish on while watching something that has an old school comic book feel to it, this is the porno for you. Well, that's it for Superhero Month, but October is coming and I thought it'd be a great idea if I let you the fans decide what genre I review that month. Your choices are Pornoween 2, in which I review horror porn movies again, Slasherween, in which I review slasher movies, or Cyberween, in which I review cyborg movies and possibly movies pertaining to the internet. Just go to the Facebook group, Cinemastrophy October Review Poll, and cast your vote there. The link is in the description, or you can just do a search on Facebook. I'm Don Perion, saving you from getting ripped off.